Today on the Basketball Manitoba podcast, we have Charles Carlos. He has been coaching basketball in Manitoba for the past 25 years. He is the founder and director of Ignite Basketball Canada. He played for Daniel McIntyre Collegiate Institute, winning a provincial championship in 1992. He played post-secondary basketball at Providence University College and toured India in the, and the Philippines with Athletes in Action USA basketball team. As a coach, he coached at Arthur A. Leach, Tech Bach, and for the North American Indigenous Games team. He won a junior high provincial championship, was named North Central Regional Coach of the Year with Providence College, WMBA Bruce Russell Memorial Coach of the Year, and Junior High Girls Coach of the Year. He is currently the 15U Males Provincial Team Coach. Charles, welcome to the podcast. Hello, thanks for having me. Super hey, excited it's about this. <laughs> it's, always, it's always a pleasure. So we were talking yeah. offline and I said, when, uh, you know, I, was, I forget who it was, someone who knows you very well. I just don't remember who it was. And I, and they were saying, well, who's next on the podcast? And I was like, well, we're doing the provincial team coaches. And I, I had already done a, a few. And then yeah. I said, you know, I think I got Charles coming. I'm like, oh, Charles, he's, he's going to be good. He's going to tell a lot of stories. So now you got all this pressure on you <laughs> oh my to perform. And now, and, and know. you know what? I, I, we're saying this live. So now you really got to perform. <laughs> now the pressure is really on. So oh my God. <laughs> we're happy to have oh you. No. Uh, suffice it to say. It's a pleasure. This is awesome. This is an honor to just be here, you know, so. For sure. For sure. Yeah, we've definitely done. We've, I've, I've been honored to interview some absolute legends. And so it's just been so, so cool. Um, so it's, a, it, it is, it, this is a special platform. Like the more I do it and then people come on, they're like, yeah, this is awesome. This is great. I've listened to some and like, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm grateful to be doing this. So happy to have yeah. you here. Um, so I've kind of been asking every guest or as many guests as, relevant to kind of reflect a bit because like we just went through the last two years of basketball not really happening depending on the level you're playing at and obviously our you know people's lives change depending on um uh you know who you are and 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 it's just been some yeah. challenges so you know what's it like being back i guess after the pandemic how's it feel oh it's 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 awesome i really love the fact that uh, you, you get a new perspective mm -hmm. of like you know coaching these kids right uh, for me, it was always been a pandemic for our family. I mean, my wife was going through cancer before the pandemic and then all of a sudden the pandemic hit. So we were like, I was already getting all these new, like, you know, perspective on life. Right. Mm, mm. And then, and then the kids, like I knew the kids weren't doing a whole lot of stuff. So I tried to get them together on zoom. We did some zoom workout on my Instagram page. I would dress up. Mm -hmm. uh, like I, I, see, I saw some of those. I definitely saw some. I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so I tried to dress up differently every time. Right. And I ran out of costumes. I actually had to borrow some of my buddies. And uh, I the worst I think the worst costume I had to wear was my like ski outfit. Right. <laughs> and I was sweating in there. Right. So I, I just tried it to keep I, I wanted to keep it going. Right. Exciting yeah. for the kids. Yeah. And they were looking forward to what kind of outfit I was wearing. Right. So um, I did that. A lot of that uh, uh, Zoom workout was great for the kids to interact. And then during the pandemic, I started, you know, I could tell like mentally a lot of these kids were starting to like hurt. Right. So mm -hmm. I actually started a Bible study with some of our uh, with our some of our core players that mm. and some of one, some of them that wanted to. So for a good five, six months, we started doing that. Uh, so no basketball talk, just, you know, um, just the Bible and just working through what they want to know, questions and all that kind of stuff. And then then we do other things like workout. It would be different. Mm -hmm. uh, different players would be on the workout and the different players would be on the Bible, Bible study. So I did a lot of stuff like that just to keep them going. Right. Mm -hmm. And then when when things started opening up. Oh man, it was, it was just so nice to see them. I would run in the gym, like a dog in a park. I'd be like, <laughs> and then all the players, it was so funny. Cause they would look at me like, guys, you're supposed to run in here screaming, going, yeah. I'm the gym. <laughs> so, um, uh, they liked that, you know, uh, it was just nice being together again. Right. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and then it would close down again, which really yeah. upset it. You know, it was upsetting for a lot of these kids. They'd be like, they're working hard. And all of a sudden it's like, Closed down. I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, lockdown. I'm like, ah, oh, again. So, and then we would do the same process again, work out, get them together in the Zoom Bible yeah. study, and then 
try to get them going again. Right. So yeah, other than that, I mean, I'm happy to be back doing stuff with the kids. Right. Um, it was a weird year, e- even for spring basketball, because yeah. should we go to the tournament? Are we allowed to cross the border? Mm, uh, yes. Uh, yes. You know, yes, all yes. that kind of stuff was so yeah. weird. We couldn't yeah. like, we couldn't even like, it, it was almost, you know, I'm Filipino. So it was very spontaneous, like Filipino thing, right? <laughs> go, hey, let, let's go. I'm like, mm. it was like, okay, we're going. There's the weirdest thing for me. Cause like, I would be like, okay, a week before we're going to Grand Am. I'm like, oh my gosh, we got to get hotels. Oh my gosh. We gotta get, <laughs> you know, all this kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, oh man. So, oh, okay. So obviously you had mentioned some perspective change, but now you're coaching the provincial team. You must be excited. Is is I this am. your first year coaching provincial team as the, as the head coach? I am. Yeah, this is, it is my first year coaching okay. as a provincial. Uh, there's a wonderful story behind this because um, a, a while ago I had, I had applied for it. Right. Hmm. And, um, and I had my old fours all 15. So I, as I referred to like old fours, my 2004 ignite players okay. were all old fours. So, and I had been coaching them for a while and I kind of knew that group very well, just mm-hmm that group in general not just my boys but in the basketball community yeah right yeah. so i kind of knew the talent and i kind of go oh man if i if i ever you know get a 15 u team together i know exactly what i would want right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um but i obviously i didn't get it i was i wasn't discouraged i just felt like oh okay i didn't i, didn't, I applied for it and i i carried on and and then three years later um my wife bugs me and she says, are you going to, are you going to apply for it? And I'm like, no, nah, I'm too busy. I'm, you know, this is fall. I'm, I, I got to, I'm concentrating on the Ignite Club team. I'm, I, I have to get this going. It's our 04s mm-hmm. last year. I got to make it, mm-hmm. uh, you know, making sure that they're uh, getting exposed and all that kind of stuff, getting to the right tournaments, right? That, you know, a lot of these young players, they want to be, you know, exposed. They want to go to university and all that kind of stuff. So, I'm doing the best I can. I'm trying to get huddle going and all that to get these videos out. Mm-hmm. And then my wife uh, says to me, it's like a week before the deadline. She kind of looks at me. She's like, you going to apply? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, I will. Like, maybe, I don't know. I said, so a couple of days later, she says, all right, fine. I'll, I'll apply. Right. So I apply. <laughs> right. And, and I said, I'm going to apply by, I said, do you have any coaches? And I said, well, I'm going to apply by myself. I'll apply for this, yep. this, and this and see what happens. Right. Um, and then I, I, I didn't really think about it because I was just so busy with like trying to get these kids uh, doing their basketball stuff, their skills and getting ready for high school. And then I get a, I get an email and a phone call and the interview uh, happened. And it was, uh, I can still remember uh, it was Dan, Randy, uh, Arlen Filovich and um, we were all chatting it up and they asked me the same questions like like you know uh, you know is this your first time so how come you apply it and I says well you know I think my wife sees something in me <laughs> right uh, so I, that's why I'm applying and, and and I mean she said this is the group that you know very well mm-hmm. you know the talent across the board mm-hmm. you know your boys very well this 2007 boys you know every every angle to it right now, why wouldn't you apply for it? Like, you know, which, which guys you would want on the team and mm-hmm, what would mm-hmm. compete uh, in other provinces. And I'm like, all right, fine. So, you know, as I got through the interview process, I started getting that like, okay, I'm starting to ignite something. Right. I was like, uh, like it. Yeah, I yeah, put the yeah. ignite in there. I, I got that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, um, so then I started to get that. Okay this is going in the right direction. I think, you know, I think I can do this. I'm going to make this happen. And, you know, um, the question they asked me was, how come you applied by yourself? And I had said, well, I could work with anybody. If you give me an assistant coach, uh, I will learn from them. They will learn from me. I can work with anybody. I'll be happy with that. Uh, I could do whatever. And they were very, uh, they were very generous to saying like, we would love for you to pick your coaches because we want you guys to all get along and stuff like that. And, and just, and I said, well, I get along with anybody, but if you want me to pick the coaches that I could do it. Right. And so they did, and they were very good about with that, right. In itself and doing the interview process. So, yeah, I mean, that is, 
kind of my my um, my journey in kind of applying for this, right? Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. um, I'm looking forward to it, right? Uh, it's I don't know. It's in, it's it's in a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. You guys got uh, the so, tryouts coming up. Yeah, and so yeah, which is uh, it's been great. It's been great uh, being um, you know uh, a 15 U uh, as they announced it. You know, I've I've had more probably more followers by a lot of uh, 15 U uh, players. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, who's this? And I'd ask my son. I'd be like. <laughs> Hey Magnus, do you know who this kid is? I'm like, oh yeah, he plays for so and so. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my age. So, I'm like, oh okay. So, well, well, let me let me ask you something. You said you're looking forward to it. So what what are you most looking for? Like, what are some of the things you're most looking forward to in the summer? Uh, I look forward to uh, seeing like the top 12 players come together and playing like a team, right? Mm. Um, and then really preparing them to mm. hey, you know what? Uh, I'm I'm a big advocate of like. It's not about you, it's about us, right? Mm-hmm. It's all mm-hmm. about us, right? Uh, this is one thing that you're gonna learn uh, by me running this program is that you're gonna quickly learn how to play like a team. Like I really, honestly, I really till this day, I'm not a you know a Golden State Warriors fan, but I mean, I just love how they play together. Yeah. They move yeah. the ball well, and that's that's always been my thing with teams, right? If you can learn to move the ball well. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the one-on-one, mm-hmm. whole lot of this like standstill kind of thing. Let's see what he could do, right? So I'm looking forward to that and just um, seeing, uh, you know, just just seeing other provinces' talents, right? And be like, mm-hmm. wow, mm-hmm. this is what they have, right? Whoa, yeah, you know. Yeah. So and it kind of gets me going with like, okay, now I know what to prepare for for not just provincials, but for my club team and just for the long development for every kid out there, right? Go like, mm-hmm. hey. This is what you got to have, uh, you know. Uh, you got to have the the right hand, the left hand, you know, the jump shots, and you know, you got to play some defense, right? So other provinces are doing this already. So if you want to get if you want to get to that level, you got to be doing this kind of stuff, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, Abs- yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, I mean, we asked you to look forward, so now it's time to look backwards and focus oh. on you. Okay. So, you obviously, you've, like uh, you know, I said in the in the interview there, or in the sorry, the intro. 1992 this oh. is your graduation year and you've been coaching for over 25 years but it started obviously as a player so what were some of your first memories of basketball how did you get involved uh, who introduced you to the game where did you oh, first yeah. play it yeah oh man so general wolf you know, general, <laughs> oh yes, the wolf yes oh yes. i was at the i'm a wolf pack and uh, i actually got cut in grade seven okay right? and so uh, did it uh, deter me away? No, it didn't. Uh, I joined in grade eight, played. I played for uh, Mr. Guerra. Uh, and he, you know, he showed me the basic fundamentals of the game, right? Mm-hmm. And then grade nine came around. I ended up playing even more. And I was just like, oh, I really love this game. I got to play more of this, right? By the time I got to Daniel Mac, I got, um, I ended up playing for a coach by the name of Tony Scott. And um, I know who that is. I know. Oh yeah, and uh, he's a good coach, but I mean tough, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, like, he would tell you this is how it's done, and he was a defensive guru. He was yep. a fundamentalist. <laughs> he was like everything that you needed to know about basketball. It was there, right? Mm-hmm. And at the time, I didn't know, right? You know, you know, as you get older, you look back and you go you actually had one of the best coaches. Like, did you not realize that? Right. And, and the more and more I think about it, I did like he taught everything. So I was one of those um, high schoolers that got to have, I had Tony Scott for three years. So I had him for my grade 10 year. Yeah. And then I thought I was going to get Dwayne brothers as my varsity coach. Right. So he was the varsity coach and I was like, Oh, I'm going to get Dwayne brothers. I'm going to be like, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, JV's done. I'm going to move on. Right. And I, I said, you know, uh, Tony Scott was quite intense for me. And uh, hopefully, you know, when I get to varsity, it's going to be quite good. Right. And he moved up and I'm like, okay, it's going to be intense for the next two years. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know what? I do have to give him props. Uh, You know, he, he worked us hard. Right. Mm. He worked us hard with our fundamentals, our shooting. He actually he was one of those guys who 
who changed my jump shot, right? Okay. Um, uh, he really broke it down for me. I didn't like the fact that he broke my jump shot down in grade 10. But at the at the same, because I thought it wasn't broken already, right? Yeah, and yeah, he's of like, course. You know, You're like a I young kid, like, perfect, I'm good. Right? I'm I was like, talking yeah. about <laughs> I say, everything goes in for me, right? And then he, he broke it down for me in grade 10. By the time I got to grade 11, man, I was just like, in practice, I was shooting, right? And and I was like, wow, this is a really nice jump shot. I really like it. And that's how I've learned to like even teach players, right? Like, this is how you, you know, break it down. You know, I was very fortunate to play with some amazing basketball players uh, in that year. I won it. Uh, the year that we won it, I played with Daryl Baptiste uh, that year. I played with Mark Howell. He also played in the CFL. He was known as Mark Howell to me uh, growing up, but he was called Marcus Howell now. Mm. Uh, he played for the Bombers. Um, I had like Ryan Oregas was the MVP, I remember, for the Provincials. Uh, I had Peter Kage on my team, Jason Santos, all those guys that were playing, Patrick Quigley. George Valentin, like these guys. Oh, Jeff Proskin. I can't. Are, are, we, we always had to have some token white guy. Of course. Taller than everybody Daniel, else. Daniel, yeah. Right? Daniel's. Uh... Daniel Mack, right? And yeah, yeah. so, and Jeff was that guy, right? Yeah. And so, and it was, uh, you know, he, he knew his job. He knew his role. And again, Daniel Mack always had that, like, kind of that tradition of three-point shooters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, shooters, quick, fast, full court press. And uh, we did it like that. Uh, you know, Tony Scott did that. And I mean, I didn't play very much, but I mean, when you go up against, you know, five amazing players. Oh, I forgot to mention Paulo Cuejo. Uh, he <laughs> yeah. was also on that team. Right? Yeah, yeah. So loaded. It's a loaded, loaded it was squad. a really good team. The crazy thing is, so Paulo Cuejo and I were like coaching against each other in, uh, this year for grade nine. He comes mm -hmm. up to me and he shows me the provincial picture of both of us. And we were sitting right beside each other. And I'm yeah. going, oh, my gosh, Paulo, we looked so good back then. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. And uh -huh. he would show his uh, he show his players. Yeah, and we would yeah. have a good time laughing. I said, yeah, those were the good days, I tell you. Those, <laughs> you know? And he was a great 10. He was a great 10 sensation, right? Oh, and wow. I was, yeah, 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 yeah. He was a great 10 sensation. I was in grade uh, 11. And uh, there was uh, about three guys that were in grade 12. So, I mean, he was really, like, I thought he was, he was good for coming in. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, yeah, I kept on playing. Uh, I still had a passion. Like, after high school, oh, yeah, in my grade 12 year, I, I like to say this sometimes, is that, you know, we made it to the provincial finals also, but we lost to Shaftesbury, to uh, Todd McCullough. I was going to um, say, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he scored 50 points. <laughs> And his other guy, Murray, scored 10. And there was one point guard who got fouled, and he scored a bucket. Come on. Yeah. Those I are all the points? We, yeah. So that was it. And, <laughs> and, and, we lost, and we lost by three. Wow. And we still lost by three. So we were shooting the lights out. But I still remember how it, the, the points were. And we were just like, yeah. There was only the guard that only shot one point. Wow! Imagine it. if, <laughs> imagine if you imagine if there's a shot clock back then. You guys would just ran, ran, ran. Um, yeah, qu I know, question. Right? The first one when you won uh, in, in grade eleven, who who did you play in against? Who did you guys win uh, against? Transcona. Transcona, Transcona Collegiate. Can you believe you remember, they used to be good? <laughs> I was gonna say, do, would I know any of the like? If you name, do you remember any of the players? That yeah, so on those the teams? one that's uh, would uh, stick out to uh, right now would be Vince Bueno. He was their guard. Okay. Okay. Um, and then other than that, I don't know. There was another Filipino guy there. I forget his name, but he was good. Uh, but other than that, like we didn't, we didn't even know who they were too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. So, should, should we say like I was in the West and we didn't know who they is. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you had mentioned, you mentioned some, some people already. I mean, you mentioned, uh, Tony Scott who, you know, I've, I've got to see it probably like much later and, and him getting down in his advanced age in this deep defensive stance and like this is how yes. you got to play i was like oh my yeah. who is this guy uh <laughs> when i was in college i was like this guy's amazing i think he lives out in bc now but um but yeah so he's obviously was a mentor to you clearly yes so yeah. and you had mentioned some of the things that he taught you um were there any other mentors out there and if so who are they and then second to that what were some of the maybe some of the lessons tony or other mentors taught you that you even to this day still try Ooh. to pass on you know, um, you know, I always, I often think about how Tony Scott coached, right? And like, 
I think I coached a lot like him, right? Just because I spent a lot of time with Tony, right? I mean, we practiced every day. That was like three years of him being my coach. Uh, every, uh, five times a week, two hours a day. Sometimes there's morning practice. So I got to like, like really imitate a lot of the things that he would say, do, and all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, my parents immigrated here and my father was busy always working. And my mother was always busy working and he became more like that role model for me. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, how to how to act on the court and sometimes uh, how to get angry with some of the players and all that kind of stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, till this day, I still use a lot of his drills uh, because it was very it was very good. And uh, uh, it's like the fundamentals are so good about it. And I know that I'll be doing a lot of those fundamental drills using it in provincials. And I could see it already. I could see Randy going, Randy Cassano going, Hey, I know those drills. <laughs> from, like, I'm like, that's yeah. right. I still use them from the, the days that Tony Scott was like <laughs> teaching me how to do them. So yeah. 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 That's so, awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, he, he's, he's as a coach, he's probably taught me a lot of things uh, as a player. Right. Uh, just picking up a lot of things, uh, I mean, he just ingrained so many things to us, right? How to run this, how to run that, how to find the open person, head man that ball. Like, he, it was just, like, ingrained in you. So, you know, when you start playing somewhere else, you would make the right decisions. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes coaches would be like, as a player, would be like, yo, those are right. Those are good decisions. Those are right decisions. Yeah. I don't like, yeah, yeah. you know, I never, ever thought about it. But then I, you think about it now, you say, yeah, because, you know, Tony Scott really – you know, do this or else you're running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He he literally right. drilled he literally drilled it into you. He drilled in the yeah. behaviors. He did. So then yeah. so then I you know, I know of Providence College. Uh I got a letter from, in high school from Providence College, not knowing anything about them. So the question is, is one, how did you end up there? And second, did you even know they existed before you ended up playing there? <laughs> oh man, how did I get up? Uh so uh so after high school, I had become, um, I was an athlete, right? So I played a, yeah. a, a, in like, so if I'm going to go back to my grade 11 year, I played pretty much every sport. I played football, mm -hmm. right? And then after football, our year ended. And then I played volleyball because I wanted to get my hops going, right? Mm -hmm. So football <laughs> back then would teach you the aggression and strength, right? And yep. then yep. volleyball would teach you the hops, right? Because mm -hmm. I said, I just, I just want to, I just want to, get my hops going, getting ready for basketball. So those are the two main things that I, you know, kind of uh, wanted to do in prepare for basketball, right? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you know, you're specializing pretty early, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so I was doing that. So when basketball season came, I played basketball. And then after basketball, it was team handball, right? Play team handball and then track. So I did all that just to better myself and all that kind of stuff. So after high school, I did I still had some passion in me, right? I didn't know what I was going to do. I, was, I took a year off. And then a friend of mine said, you know, why don't you uh, play some football? And I'm like, mm -hmm. football? Yeah. Um, I didn't get to that part of Providence, which is quite interesting because, so I ended up playing football for the junior Hawkeyes, which is now the Rifles. Okay. Yeah. So like junior right? football? Like, yeah. Was, it Western, so was I, it Western junior football back then as well? Was it yeah. The same? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. I'll, I'll play, see how it go. And, you know, I played one season and I was playing with guys like Dave Donaldson, Mark Howell. Uh, there was another guy named Shaw. And I, I come in and I'm, I'm playing with these guys. And, uh, you know, and then a bomber came in, gave his testimony. Uh, I had become a Christian during that, uh, during that same year. And then the following year, I said, like, you know, I think, I think I'm not going to play. Um, you know, uh, football this year, I'm just going to concentrating on my relationship with Jesus and see what happens. Right. So I ended up doing all that kind of stuff. And it ended up that I went to, um, uh, the, the mentor that was kind of mentoring me in my walk said, you know, uh, go to this church. I went to this church and all of a sudden I ended up becoming the, the youth director at this okay. church, right? Cause they, <laughs> they just, they just saw a little, they saw a passion that I had for kids and stuff like that. And they ended yep. up like, hey, why don't you, you know, take care of our youth and all that kind of stuff? And I was like, oh, well, sure, why not, right? And so then, um, 
And then he kind of encouraged me, hey, you know, there's a school out in Audubon that you can take some courses. And I was like, oh, I got to take a look at it, right? So I, I kind of looked into it and they had a basketball team. And I obviously I'm like, I kind of want to play some basketball still. Like I have a bit of a passion, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, so I, I applied for it as a, a part-time student, right? And because I was also working as a part-time youth director, part-time city worker, yeah. and I was a part-time student. So I was all like a part-time everything, right? Yeah. So I, uh, and they, they had a basketball team. And so the basketball team was consist of four part-timers or they considered that wouldn't make the, the, they had the, a team for just a U.S. kind of, you play the U.S. Yes, team, yes, yes. Right. Cause, cause they played and mainly in, in the United States, correct? At the that's time. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And so then the other one would be, you'd play against like Catherine Booth uh, mm -hmm. at the time. They I didn't have CMU at the time. I'm just trying to think. Uh, then they, they had, um, we played Oak Hills. We played, um, I forget who else we would play, but there was a couple of teams we would play. Not, not many games. Mm -hmm. uh, so I ended up, why not playing? Right. And you know, when you go into uh, Providence college, they kind of know you because they, they've heard about you because like, you know, I was touring before all that I was touring with athletes in action. So okay, they heard, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So they're like, Oh, let's get, let's get Charles on the team. Right. So we ended up playing and sometimes um, oh, we had such a good team. We thought we could beat the A team because we were considered the B team. Right. Yeah. We were like, Oh yeah, we could totally beat the A team, <laughs> but they never wanted to scrimmage against us. Right. We, they were like, no, no, we're you not. You guys didn't do scrimmage. We never scrimmaged. Come against on. You got a team never... right here. You think you'd be like, let's get some, let's practice some stuff. Let's get some they, reps. They, they, uh, for some reason they did not want wow. to, uh, wow. you know, I, and I, and I had, I had still had that inner city like attitude of like, Oh yeah, we can take them. They can't yeah. guard us. Let's yeah, do yeah. this. Right. Uh, but you know what? Uh, we never ever got to play them. We got to play. I know that, I can still remember playing Oak Hills in the finals, but it was at the, at the blue gym, right? At mm -hmm. uh, Mennonite uh, MBCI. And okay, yeah, we yeah. lost. Yeah, we lost. But I mean, it was, those were good times. You know, I made some good friends in Providence and I didn't know about it. Like at the time until my pastor told me about it, I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, sure. Yeah. And so then, you know, I played and it was great. Good experience, made some friends and yeah, it was good. I really yeah. liked it. Providence is a uh, is somewhat of a hidden gem. So I I know you know some of the same people that you know that went there. But I know it's funny how many people I know that played basketball there. And yeah. it's and I always ask like like hey how did you find out about it? And it's always some like roundabout way. But yeah. the one thing that they always say or they or their their experience are always very fond. Like they always have fond memories. Um, and so I think it's it's just it's just kind of like hidden gem. Audubon is like a town, but like there's nothing there really except Providence. Right. And it's like but yeah. you know. People who go out there, like, like, you know, obviously we know, you know, our Graham Bodner, our, our good friend. Yeah, yeah. And like this guy, <laughs> this guy, you know, hey, I'll drive out there every day. Let's go, right? Like, what are we doing? And 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 they find this this special community there. And I, so, I, you know, I've been out there. Obviously, I coach at CMU as well. So yeah. I kind of know, I know, you know, the gym and, and the campus. But um, yeah. it's interesting the way that the, the perspective people have. Because if you just said, hey, go look at this place, people are like, oh, like, what's so good about it? Like, I, it's yeah. Nothing, but there is something special there for sure. I, I do have to mention, you mentioned Graham Bonner. I saw Graham Bonner a couple of like weeks ago doing the provincial uh, club provincials and he ran into me and he's like, oh, are you coaching? I said, yeah, I'm coaching this, 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 I'm coaching the 08, 07. And then yeah. I said, I'm thinking, of I'm, I'm thinking of coaching this and blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm coaching the Filipino team. And I said, you know, I'm kind of the Graham Bonner of coaching. <laughs> and he kind of yes. he he looked at me and he's like, what? I was like, yeah, I'm the, I'm the cram botner of coaching. Because like, you know, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. And yeah. he just laughed. I, I think you know what I'm talking about, oh, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. And anyone who knows Graham knows too. Anyone's listening. He plays in a hundred leagues. If there's a league, if there's a game, he's, he's there. So yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's very well said. <laughs> um, so you had mentioned you are the Graham Bodner of coaching. So oh. how did... <laughs> How did you get into coaching? You're, you know, you're, you're doing this, you're playing, you're, you're working, you're doing all these things, you're taking classes. When did you start coaching? How did you get into it? Where did you yeah. start coaching? Yeah. Okay. So I, I, my, my starting point of coaching would have been at the YMCA. Okay. Uh, a guy by the name of uh, Jamie Hutchinson, who is now a principal at Grand Park. Uh, he used to work at uh, 
the YMCA and he, you know, we would play basketball and he kind of said to me and my buddy, Peter Cadigay, he's like, Hey, you two guys want to coach basketball? I'll pay you guys. <laughs> You're like, I what? was like, <laughs> I was like, what? Wait a minute. Like, what? And you know, as a young guy, you know, and they say, yeah, we'll pay you guys $15 an hour. I was yeah. like, wait, wait, time out. Yeah. But not knowing, you, you think that's great, but not yeah. knowing practice is only an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> for he's two, pay, for like pay you 50, 30, 30 bucks a week or something. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going, dang, let's do this. Right. And games, uh, you know, games will be on the weekend. It's an yeah. in house uh, YMCA kind yeah. of thing. I'm like, okay. And we were like, yo, Peter, we're getting paid for this. This is awesome. So we went through this whole like year of coaching these young uh, athletes and we enjoyed it. And then from there, I thought to myself, ah, okay, I'll play. I'll, I was young still. So I would continue to play basketball and then coach, mm -hmm. continue to play basketball and then coach. So I would use a lot of my uh, playing experience into coaching because I didn't know a whole lot of coaching. All I, I all I remember was Tony Scott doing this, like, hey, this is how you're doing it. Run these kind of, and yeah, I was just, yeah. and I would do the exact same thing. Didn't matter, it didn't matter if they were like age seven. What do you mean you can't get this power layup? Let's let's do this properly, right? Or let's do this left hand. You can't get it. Well, we got to keep working on it. Left hand, left hand until you get it. Here's the steps, and I was quite patient with it, right? Which was quite neat to look back at it because most coaches were kind of like okay he, and let's just he can't do the left let's just leave it let's just yeah. use him yeah. he's got a strong right hand yeah let him just go strong right hand yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, I'm like ah you know so it was so it started off back then at the ymca and then slowly trickled to like um community uh to like and then i ended up working for the city at a community center started working there and then started a basketball program with the uh, Turtle Island Community Center, started mm -hmm. opening up the gym because I had the keys to it, uh, the building, right? So mm -hmm. I would open it up, the gym at like 12 a.m. and let these guys come in and play basketball. And uh, at the time, they're like, aren't, like I remember uh, my mom's like, aren't you scared? I'm like, no, we're playing basketball. Like yeah. These guys are coming in to play basketball, right? I could still remember like gang members coming in here, like at, at Turtle Island, just loving the fact that I'm opening up the gym for them and like, let's play. And it was interesting because, you know, I'm there and I'm a young guy and mm. they weren't afraid of me, but they wanted to test me out mm. as a, as a baller. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, let's try it. Right. And you can just tell as soon as you start playing against them and they know that you were legit, they were like, yo, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you in the good, respect right away. Yeah, good, yeah, yo, yeah, yeah. Right? And, yeah. and it was just like I started gaining their respect, right? And they started coming. And, and then there was a, a lady by the name of Karen. She, you know what? She set up a team for me. She said, Charles, would you coach a boy, boys and girls team? And I was single at the time. And I was like, yeah, I'd do it. I'd love to. And they came in, we had a tryout. Um, and it was so much fun. I could still remember a lot of these like players. So here's the funny thing. One of their, uh, one of the players kid, cause I'm at, I work at tech Vox high school. Mm -hmm. One of the players kid goes to tech Vox. She comes up to me and she says, hi to me. And she goes, you know, my dad. And I'm like, who's your dad? He's like, uh, Leonard Monkman. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah. Like, Leonard yeah I know Leonard, oh yeah. my gosh <laughs> Leonard is I said yeah it's so nice to see you it's like you feel like oh my gosh I've been okay wait hold on rewind so you're saying that Leonard was one of the players on one of those boys teams and then yeah fast yeah. forward you're at tech and they come <laughs> I got it okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome so that's it, awesome. it is uh it's actually neat to see and then I, of course I would just kind of embarrass you know Leonard's daughter and be like Oh, by the way, do you guys want to know something about Bella? And then they're all like, uh -huh. I said, I used to coach. I used to coach her dad. And then they're like, what? <laughs> right? And, and, and the funny thing is like Dan Shinkarek. I don't know if you know Dan Shinkarek. Yeah. Dan yeah. Shinkarek hears this and he goes, what? Holy. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's been a while. I know. I've been around. I've been around. I don't look at it. I don't look at it. I mean, I know. I get it. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So. 
it's uh it, it's been doing that and then when i got married um i i didn't i did the indigenous games mm-hmm. and i had a bunch of awesome players right i had nick scott i had carl zadnik i had like um i, I even had like uh, kevin chiefs I, I believe brother uh, uh they they were like such a great group of boys uh, till this day I, I mean i was young coaching right mm-hmm. And till this day, Carl Zachman always tells to me on Facebook and says, you should have taken off that press and we would have never lost. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wow. oh, man, I get it. Like, you know, uh, I was young and I, yeah, you know, yeah. I always believed everybody can press like Daniel Mack did. Right. Because yeah, all, yeah. all we did was press, press, press. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so um, but, you know, I, I've learned over time, you got to know who you have turn off these presses and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I did that. And then, and as I got married, a Providence college coach came up, right? Did that. Uh, it was the women's team. And, uh, you know, my wife and I looked at each other. I said, you, you want to give, I'd love to try it. Right. I did that. And I did that for three years and I enjoyed that too. Right. And then um, as, as we, as I continued on coaching, I, uh, we had like, I, I believe it was like our our third child and I had to stop because mm-hmm. my wife needed me at home. Mm-hmm. And I says, okay, I'm going to, I said, I know you love coaching, but you're going to have to bring it back home because there's a lot of traveling with these teams. Right. I think yep. you know yep. that. Right. Yeah. So I brought it back home. I ended up coaching some tech block team where it was closer to home. Right. Uh, and I continued to do that for about two to three years and our kids were starting to grow. And, uh, and then she says to me, you know, your kids are starting to grow. <laughs> Time to get back uh, into it. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just letting you know, um, you might want to start coaching your kids. <laughs> I'm like, that's not a bad idea. I yeah, think that's yeah. a great idea. So I start coaching WNBA, bring it back to the fundamentals. And from like, you know, you went from like uh, pretty high women you know, Providence College, you know, you're traveling, you're playing against the U.S. team, you're playing against teams here. And then you went from like high school and then you went like back down, like, you yeah, know, yeah, and you're yeah, like yeah. back to fundamentals. Right. Uh, and then I continued doing that with just the kids throughout WNBA. I got to meet you during that time. Mm-hmm. You know, you were so good about doing all those scheduling, even though you were probably thinking, oh, no, it's Charles. again. <laughs> He's going to talk about scheduling if he can like schedule everything because he's coaching three teams <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah i think you remember i remember that. you would give me <laughs> these nice long emails you were always so nice about it though you weren't like some people are just mean and they're like just do this and you're like what but you were always oh, very diplomatic so i i appreciated oh, that <laughs> oh yeah so i mean and then and then you know and then i started like my kids started getting better doing the w WNBA, which was a great starting point i always i always preach that a great starting point is that the WNBA. Now that, you know, I'm doing club and then I started club and then it just kept on going. Right. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I never thought of like the club o- was only based on like, I'm just going to do this club just for the kids and stuff for that. Then my passion just started kicking in. It just started yeah. igniting that. Like, I love these kids. These kids need, Hey, if you're part of this team of my kids team or whatever's team, I said, you're going to learn a lot of things. Come on. Mm-hmm. I'm going to teach mm-hmm. you some stuff. Right. And so mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's how it started to go even more, right? And the yeah. other day we were just t- looking at a timeline. My wife and I we made a timeline from like, um, you know, um, 1998 to like when we started coaching. I was like, holy smokes! Yeah, and I did that to play, and I did this to play, and I did. That's crazy, right? So that's awesome. That's always yeah. nice to reflect back. So, okay, so. We're getting close to the end. We're about three quarters through. I have a few more questions and we're yeah. going to wrap it up. Um, now, these questions here are more so just like, I'm just going to ask you something and you just tell me the first thing that comes to mind. All right. Sure. Uh, now, take a moment. Like, don't feel like pressure. If you have to like think about it for a moment, that's fine. Um, okay. First question. Most memorable basketball story or moment? Single moment. Okay. It could be an entire season, you know, like. Yeah. So uh, the moment would be. You know, I don't know if you remember this, but I know there's there's going to be people watching this that will remember this. All right. Uh, I, I got to play in this league called the CBL. Okay. And it was run by Kevin. And okay. and the, the one good thing about what Kevin did, right, he brought all the good ballers together mm-hmm. in one summer. 
Yeah. Like Shannon Shell was there. Uh, Ogo was playing, myself, Sherwin, all these guys. If, if you guys are listening, you know what I'm talking about. Right? <laughs> it was a CBL league, and I ended up playing with um, – I had Shannon Shell on my team. He was playing with the Cyclones. Which one was first, Thunder or Cyclone? The Thunder, last one was... Thunder were first and Cyclone were after. Okay, so he was playing with the Cyclones, right? And so he ended up staying in the summer and he was playing on um, our team. So it was myself, it was Sherwin, Shannon, uh, Cavadis was also on this team. Uh, and my, uh, so, but I, and Murray, Yeah. right? And then there was another stack team. I remember Ogo, Suk, and they were all like another team. And uh, we we ended up winning, right? But I could still remember the first game we played. So we were I, the game was tight the whole game. It was the first game of the season. And you know how, you know, there's like 18 seconds left and the other team scores. But you mm-hmm. look really quickly to the scoreboard. And it looks tied, but yet they didn't, they weren't quick enough yeah. to put the, yeah. the points on. Yeah. So with 18 seconds left, you're down. So it's tied. So, you know, you're, you're kind of going, oh, I foul. That was the right thing to do because I thought we were down. Right. So it was like, you, you thought, it was, okay, we're down two points. They scored, they tied it, but you, you quickly, oh my God. Yeah. You foul and everybody in the building goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, and I said, what? You're supposed to foul. Because, like, you know, my yeah. IQ was kicking yeah. in. And I was like, yeah. listen, we're down by whatever. two, yeah. man. Like, do you know? Yeah. And I look at the scoreboard and they're like, no, it's a tie game. Oh, no. And I was like, oh, shoot. And it was like 10 seconds left. And I fouled the wrong guy. And it was, I still remember the guy's name is York Park. And he gets York, to the line. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, York Park gets to the line, and I foul, and I'm like, I'm feeling like this little, right? And and I'm and I, I'm feeling so disappointed. He makes both of them, without any hesitation. Sherwin gets the ball, and I I I, I can't do anything, right? So I'm just like, I just gotta go. And I thought Sherwin was gonna go coast to coast, right? So Sherwin dribbles up the ball, and Sherwin, if you're watching this, you'll remember this. <laughs> he dribbles up the ball. He sees me in the corner, and I shoot it. Goes in and it goes, and everybody goes crazy. And I was just like, I cannot believe I just made that shot. <laughs> and then, and, and Shannon <laughs> Shell, I'll never forget what Shannon Shell said to me. He goes, I don't care what happened, a win is a win. Great job. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my God. So I still remember that. I'll, I'll never forget it because there was like, if you're watching, guys, you know what I'm talking about. I, I, I think. I Sherwin will remember that if you ever chat chat with him, he'll say, Oh yeah, that was a good one. You know? Wow. And so that was that was one of my memorable moments as mm-hmm. a player, mm-hmm. right? Uh so well yeah. I, let me ask you something about that. Cause is this you said Kevin was running it. So I heard another story about a similar league, which is probably the same league. And and you just correct me if I'm wrong here, but was this the same league that there was like a cash prize for the winning team? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yes. I'm just going to go out on a limb here and I'm not going to say anything, but my next question is what's your funniest basketball story? Oh. <laughs> so that's Cause I, oh, at first yeah. I thought I was going to be like, is this going to kill two birds with one stone? Like it's kind of funny, but no, that was memorable. Um, yeah. So yeah. What is your funniest? It could be from anywhere, you know, balls yeah. to the head, someone slipped and fell. I don't know. What, what do you got? Yeah. Yeah. No. So, okay. So I was a coach for the Providence women's team. Mm-hmm. And I think we're going to Bismarck. Bismarck is probably uh, southwest, yeah. right? And, no, and North Dakota, right? Yeah, yeah, North Dakota. And so, you know, and we were heading down first. So I was going to take uh, five of the girls with me in the van. And I said, okay, let's go. And so then um, the other girls still had class, right? Mm-hmm. So they're like, oh, we'll meet you there. We'll be there an hour or two behind you guys, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, no problem. I says, okay, well, we're gonna go down. Here we go. We pack the van, five girls in the in the in the van, and we get to the border. And uh, you know, we're like, oh yeah, yeah, we're going to a basketball tournament. Uh, it's Bismarck and blah blah blah. We give all our like IDs and our passports, and and I kind of like it's taking long, girls. And I said, this doesn't look good. I'm like, why, coach? Because there's five white girls in the van. And there's coach. And they're all like, 
what do you mean coach and i'm like i think they're gonna pull us into the garage i have a feeling and they're like no they won't do that i'm like and what do you know they pull us in the garage and they put us in a a room where you can't see on the outside but they could probably see you and then it's like a mirror you can see i'm like oh my gosh they're checking the van i said this doesn't look good already (laughs) Uh. i said so we're like, we're there for 20 minutes and the girl starts joking around with me. I'm like, thanks coach. Thanks coach. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, what? Yeah. what did I do? Right. Yeah. So we, we get it. We get back to the van and we drive. I'm like, Oh my gosh, they actually pulled us over because coach, you're different from all of us. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the whole time, and it didn't help that the van was white too. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we were just like, yeah. and the girls were, and they, they just ra- they just razzed me the whole of course, weekend. Of like, course, hey, of course, of hey, course. Hey, hey, let's get in the van with Coach. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. So those girls, <laughs> I, I, if you're listening, you know, you know that story. You remember <laughs> it. So DM me if you remember that story. So uh, <laughs> that's I'll never oh, forget man. that. I tell you, but I do oh. have to, I, I do have to say, as a coach. Uh, one story I, I, I also stick, sticks out to me is when I was coaching my daughter's team, her grade eight year, and really she, they had a really good year and they were undefeated. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we were preparing for the junior high championship uh, going in there and Stanley Knowles were like our biggest rivalry. They always had close games against us. And none of the girls ever told me this two weeks before the big tournament because we were getting to the finals and they're all like, Oh, by the way, coach, uh, we're going to a Ger- Germany exchange. And like three of my starters are gone and I ha- I'm going to, li- I'm, I'm left with two. <laughs> so I'm going, it's two, it's, it's two weeks before the big, the big yeah. game. Yeah. And so I had to bring up some girls and coach them up for two weeks. Really just, I didn't even pay attention to the two girls that were staying. Yeah. I just was coaching these two girls and I just like, okay, these I, I need you guys to know this, 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 and this is how we're going to run things. I just kept on just doing it for two weeks. And honestly, that was probably my most intense moment. And my wife till this day says, I do have to say that was one of your best coaching you've ever done. Because mm-hmm. when you have three girls that left, I have never seen you so like, uh, so determined to like, I said, I don't want to be like Bill Belichick and lose in the final game. There's no <laughs> yeah, 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 way, undefeated. Right? <laughs> Oh. So, um, so I, 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 that was very memorable and it was sweet to have like my daughter kind of, su- uh, seal the deal in a foul shot. Right. Mm. And if like, if Stanley Knowles only knew, boy, I think they would have beaten us <laughs> if they only knew. So. <laughs> if they knew, yeah, they didn't know. Hey, so <laughs> if they, they knew like, know. Hey, they these great, these great sevens or whatever, were they great eights, I guess? Uh, great eights yeah, or great sevens. They were great sevens. sevens. Yeah. Cause yeah, it was yeah, great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 yeah wow. So. Nice. Nice. Well, okay. I got one last question before we wrap it up here. Um, sure. Always ask coaches, players. I mean, it's always ask for a piece of advice, right? I mean, if anyone listens from front to back and is paying attention, there's so much um, pieces of, there's little nuggets uh, within stories, right? Within perspectives. But then yeah. it's very nice at the end just to be very straightforward and just kind of say, yeah. okay, here's what I think, right? If, if people weren't listening for those reasons. So, what advice would you give to coaches? And maybe I like to, you know, I want, I want to focus on the younger coaches because yeah, I think we kind of did a whole roundabout, you know, we, we circled back and you talked about kind of what you used to think early on and then you re- realize some things later on. Um, so maybe some insights for those younger coaches. If, if you imagine you're standing in front of a bunch of young coaches and you're giving them yeah. a clinic and you want something for them to take away, what would you leave them with? Yeah. Um, I would say, you're going to make mistakes and it's okay. Right. Uh, because mistakes is what makes you better. Right. And, um, and, and always stick to the fundamentals. I always, I always, you know, fundamentals is where this is where I got a lot of players to uh, play at a high level. It's the fundamentals mm-hmm. as boring as it is. You've got to stick to the fundamentals. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's all these fancy kind of drills, fancy, like two on one, Euro step and all that kind of stuff, but really it's the boring stuff will that will get you there. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, and really, again, just 
build your relationship with each and one of the players, get to know every one of them. Um, you know, if you're a young coach, the number one thing that you want to do also is like, if you're working with, uh, young people, uh, get to know also the parents, right? Uh, I know I'm a parent myself and I love, I love it when coaches introduce themselves to me and I'll be like, Hey, how are you doing? I says, Oh, that's your, that's your kid. I'm like, yeah, I said, so it's nice to also recognize the parents, right? Young coaches out there definitely try to recognize who their parents are. Uh, and you know what? Yeah. Just build those relationships and you'll see how far that relationship will take you because I, even till this day, I still have these amazing relationships that I have now with these past uh, players that I've coached. Uh, they'll text me. Uh, some of them, they know that, uh, you know, some of them know that I, I love God and they're like, can you pray for me? Uh, can you like, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's just amazing to have these relationships, right? And they know that you're genuine and that you love them and that, uh, uh and that you care for them throughout the yeah. th throughout their whole basketball career, right? So yeah. yeah. And they'll they'll even send you Facebook messages telling you reminding you, hey, if you would have took that press off, <laughs> yeah, Carl, <laughs> you would have won the yeah. game. <laughs> you would have won that game. Totally. Which is so funny. Uh, Sometimes I don't know how to react to that. I just kinda like, uh, be like, hmm, what do I right. say? Maybe I shouldn't say anything. Or maybe I should just say wow. Yeah, 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 <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow, yeah. exactly. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, we're going to wrap it up on there. Uh, good luck. I think uh, by the time people are listening to this, you're probably into the provincial season already. So I hope yes, you're having a good yeah. time um, and uh, working, uh, getting your first opportunity as a, as a head coach of the provincial team. And uh, you're, uh, I, I like the one thing that stuck with me uh, in the interview here. You said, um, you said, uh, I don't know if you said, I think, I think you were saying you said this in the interview process, but you said, my wife saw something in me. So I'm here, you know? And so, you know, you mentioned your wife a few times, and I think uh, the relationship and the support she gives you is, is 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 being displayed by you. And so I think that's that was just really special. It just stuck with me. So I wanted to kind of bring that back around and uh, say good luck. And thanks for taking the time. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate good. it. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Please like, subscribe, follow, and share this series. And reach out to us with your comments on the show. Thanks again for joining us.